Привет, товарищи! I am Prolet, and this is Revolutionary Network. Today we're going to be watching a video on why uh, real socialism never has been tried. Uh, this man looks very convincing, so let's get right into his arguments. Has socialism let you down, taken your business, put your family in a gulag, or maybe left your country in tatters? Don't worry, because from what I've been told, that probably wasn't real socialism. But do we know if that's true? We know that many people in some nations have tried to create a real socialist society. So the question is, why hasn't it worked? Or why, when it fails, are we told that that wasn't real socialism? Well, to get to the bottom of this, let's try to define our terms. Okay, so... Well, actually, yeah, let's, let's see what he defines it as. Karl Marx wrote of a socialist society with the anthem of from each according to their ability and to each according to their need. Ooh, no, that was, um, from each according to their ability, each according to their needs. Um, that was generally communism and socialism, not just socialism. Sounds great. How do you do it? Well, to achieve this, Marx demanded the abolition of the private ownership of the means of production. So whether your socialism is democratic, revolutionary, utopian, market, authoritarian, or some other variant, the common... He didn't just, like, tell us what the means of production are, so... Um, the means of production are basically the capital, how to make money, or how to produce products. ...feature among all versions seems to be that the means of production cannot be owned privately like it is in free market economies. So the question is, if you want to transition your current society into a real socialist one, how would you go about doing that? Well, presumably, not everyone is going to be keen to hand over their property for this experiment, so you will require a legal apparatus to confiscate and redistribute property. And we typically rely on the government to do this since that's the institution that can use aggressive force legally. Now, um, you don't need to do it legally, but okay, uh, yes, that is technically true. Now, proponents of real socialism may argue that once you have a sufficiently socialist and egalitarian society, this sort of government action will no longer be required, or at least it'll be significantly limited. No, no, uh, so the idea is that when you've reached the end of socialism, you can, like, or uh, there's a bit of a blurry line be between communism and socialism, but the end goal in socialism is to reach communism. Um, so when we're done with socialism, when we've gone through that stage, um, then we can abolish the state, we can abolish basically everything that's bad in society, in, is what I think of it as. Of course, you can disagree with that if you want problem is that never seems to happen because it turns out the government power that was required to do all the confiscating and redistributing is now required to maintain the socialist order politically socially and economically and the only yeah so the thing is um at least in my opinion um the re re the reason i think that those uh socialist states have never like succeeded uh quote unquote um in the end goal of reaching communism is because to reach communism, you need to have a total world revolution. You can't, you can't just establish a socialist or a communist state, like uh, a communist society inside of the middle of Siberia, um, because, well, either you get conquered or you get starved to death because of lack of preparation. You can't. This is why anarchy, in my opinion, won't work. The only way it can do this is through the application of force. In a socialist-run economy... You need it to be planned, is my, is my opinion. Trains still need to run on time. Factories still need to produce consumer goods, and the farms still need to provide food. And when someone doesn't pull their weight, there must be punishment. And so the powerful government doesn't go away. In fact, in many cases, it becomes even more powerful. Now, interestingly enough, there are examples of peaceful attempts at socialism. Oh, are we going to talk about uh, Allende? Like, uh, Chile. Right here in the good old capitalist United States. Yeah, okay, no, we're not. Okay. The States of America, many people have attempted to set up communes that ran off the principles of socialism and communal property. Interesting. I've not heard that before. Now, because of property rights in the United States, you can establish a commune, you can run a commune, you can join a commune. You just can't force other people to join with you. Which is fair. And over 30 of such communes were founded in the... Wow! 
over 30 with a th with a nation of like 300 million people over 30 communes have been tried ideas of utopian socialist charles foyer yeah utopian socialists i don't how is this an argument is this like meant to be like oh yeah no this will never work because uh uh the utopianism didn't work most of them only lasted a few years not because the u.s government came in and cracked them down for being socialist they failed because people chose to leave so with so we're just not going to talk about the democratically elected socialist uh countries such as chile or i think also argentina was democratically elected or they democratically elected a socialist leader uh burkina faso among others huh what's interesting is that in practice socialists are generally free to set and and they um those countries did improve majorly within the times uh of which they had power for example um in burkina faso um they increased the literacy massively in um in the USSR, they almost eliminated poverty from from what I know. I don't think there was any, actually. You can correct me, of course. Um, yeah, and also, there was only one major famine in the USSR. Set up socialist-style communes in free countries, but capitalists will be violently oppressed in socialist... Yeah, because they're undermining the state. It's like, no, 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 you're not, no. The US is actively suppressing socialists and communists. What, what the fuck do you mean they will be, like, accepted or something? They're not socially accepted, they're not uh, politically accepted, they're not accepted at all. They're being actively suppressed. Like... Okay. Countries. So perhaps the reason why we don't see any countries successfully implementing that real socialism we keep hearing about is not because it hasn't been tried, but because its over-reliance on violence and coercion produces not only poor economic results, but socially unbearable ones. Yeah, so you see, um, the US is actually <coughs> so cool because, like, uh, we don't rely on violence to keep ourselves in power. We just need to, like, um... Ignore Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, which we failed at even. South Vietnam. Uh, we can also ignore um, the rest of the Cold War because that's in the past. And we can also um, ignore Libya and uh, Serbia and everything else because uh, we're so great. How socially unbearable? We can watch this video here. Will you and we can also uh, just ignore how we're infiltrating the communist parties in America. Because uh, we're just so uh, cool. Like and subscribe.